Uh, are we ready to move on to the Washington Wizards? Let's do it. Uh, so the Wizards are should be sellers who probably fancy themselves as buyers. Is how I classified them. Yeah. Um, they have a notable traded player exception, six point three million. It expires next January. It was just created in the Rui Hachimura trade, so they probably won't use it. Uh, I have their most likely player to be traded is Will Barton. He's not really playing, and he's expiring. They are three point two million dollars below the luxury tax, so that has to be factored into any trade they make. What to watch for? I feel like there's a bunch. Is do they shop soon to be free agent Kyle Kuzma? What about soon to be free agent Christoph Porzingis? Both those guys have a player option. If they're not going to be sellers, what is their ceiling as midseason buyers? Because you've already traded Rui Hachimura and you got second round picks for him, and you owe your first round pick to New York. It's protected in 2023 for the lottery, top 12 in 2024, top 10 in 2025, top eight in 2026. And so you theoretically. Yes, you can trade a first allowable draft pick, but you can't technically guarantee a first round pick until 2028. So that would take you out of, it would seem, a lot of rosy discussions unless Team X believes, hey, they'll make the playoffs in 2024. So we're going to get 26 and 28 picks or whatever it is. So I just, we know what the Wizards should do and they're not going to do it. But like what, so then like, do you just stand pat now? Because I think a lot of people point out like, well, maybe they'll still shop Kyle Kuzma. Historically, when they've not shopped these free agents, like let's use Davis Bertans. Remember that year where they everyone thought they'd get two first round picks for him, mm-hmm. but they decided, decided to keep him. It seemed like they had good intel that they were going to be able to re-sign him. And so it doesn't seem like if they're keeping Kyle Kuzma and you're moving Rui, it kind of points to, it was never an either or posi- like proposition. Kuzma is so much better than him, but it sort of shows that you are planning to pay Kyle Kuzma, maybe Christoph Porzingis as well. Like, what are what are you doing at the deadline? And then, what is your if this is your core? What's your biggest need? I have it as just sort of a a point guard who doesn't necessarily need to be the best playmaker in the world, but it, he needs to be the perfect complement to Bradley Beal, who I would argue that we haven't really seen that point guard yet between John Wall and Russell Westbrook and now Monte Morris. Like, there hasn't been that perfect fit in the backcourt with Beal. Yeah, I so the Wizards are going to do what they've been doing for a long time, which is just recommitting to a core that just isn't good enough. Because I, 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 I think they just fully intend to keep Kuzma. He'll opt out, and then they'll, you know, they'll sign him to a new deal. I mean, I don't think that's out of the question for Porzingis either. If he opts out, I think he, I think he might. I think he, he's I, probably going to opt out. Like if he, unless he's unhealthy to finish the season it's just yeah. i don't know he's not going to get 30 million a year but he'll get more than 30 million over the longer term well, I for think. sure i mean he might just get you know four for 80 or something oh i think he could do better i mean he might oh, get wow. three, three for you know three for 80 or three for three for nine like i th- i mean because he's due to make 36 next year so like but it's crazy that that's even a there was a while there where it was like that guy's gonna just take every guaranteed dollar he can get and not risk anything but so, but then there's, there's your team basically. Cause if you're going to, if you got Beal on the books for 40, almost 47 next year and Porzingis will be in the 20 to 30 range and Kuzma is going to be probably into the 20 to 30 range too. Like you're set. Um, it's almost like it's too far gone. It, it, there's not, so it almost doesn't matter what they do. If I'm them, I got to move Barton. I just don't think he has, like, if you could get seconds for Barton, I think that's probably about his, I don't think you can. You not just, so it's nothing. He's a nothing. You think? I like you're taking. Maybe if you take back a cut, like if you're taking back Evan Fournier for oh, a little bit, like that's <laughs> oh, so bleak. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. The point guard is a need, and that Morris is like Morris was with the Nuggets. Like, oh man, what a luxury as a backup one, you know. Um, and as a starter, he's just not quite, he's just not that guy. Like he's, he'll be in the league for a long time. You know, he's not, he's already been in the league a decent, he's 27. Um, but he's not a starter there. The problem is like, they just don't have what it would take unless you're going to trade Kuzma or Danny Avdia, or I don't know that's really about it. Uh, Corey Kispert, only three and a half million, unless you're going to move those guys for what Van Vliet, like that's, you know, we can get to trades in a minute, but like, I don't Spoilers. know who you're going for to, to get, to hit that point guard need. Well, you said that they were locked into their core and I beg to differ because I came up with a trade that would <laughs> lock them into a different core. <laughs> so the wizards would receive Fred Van Vliet and Juan Hernan Gomez. The Raptors would get Will Barton, 
Daniel Gafford, Monte Morris, a 2025 first round pick. So first allowable pending the obligation to New York. That would be top seven protected. And then a second first round pick in 2027. It'd have to convey two years after the first one. That would be top 10 protection through 2029. So basically, let's just say that the Wizards would make the playoffs in 2024. That would be the, that's the, I think that's the estimation you're making in this trade. It would be mm-hmm. Will Barton, Daniel Gafford, Monte Morris, a 2026 first round pick and a 2028 first round pick for Fred Van Vliet and Juan Hernan Gomez. So you're basically locking, cause you're going to have to pay Van Vliet. You're going to have to. And Chris Dobson, Kuzma. Right. So you're saying Van Vliet, Beal, Porzingis, and Kuzma are. Yeah, that's like, that's not nothing. It's, I don't hate it. Um, but the problem is like the injury concerns with Porzingis and Beal and really Van Vliet are substantial. And now you're just like, we just don't have picks anymore, basically. So like if we do suck, there's no outs. But you're already so far down the road. Like if you're the Wizards, you're like, you might as well. So you have talked me into locking in another core just because Van Vliet is an upgrade over what they have. Like, you know, it, that that's just better. And you're a pot committed as it is. You might as well just go all the way and see if you can win a playoff series maybe. And, and everybody leaves you alone for a while. Yeah, that's I don't know how I'd feel about that core, but the four player, the five player core of Avdia, KP, Fred Van Vliet, Bradley Beal, and Kyle Kuzma is like it is intriguing. I it don't is. really know what it is, <laughs> but it's like you have a lot of sh- like defensive strengths in there between Van Vliet, what Kuzma's become, Porzingis, and even Avdia. Like that's yeah. a hell of a five man unit. Yeah. I mean, like, it's you don't have them. You would need like, Cor- like Corey Kispert's been fine. You, you got to one, right? Yeah, um, that maybe Johnny Davis will turn into something still. Probably not. I don't hate it. There's a way you can see your way. The problem is what we're talking about is like well, it's I could see my way to a team that I like their top seven guys uh, and they're like a six or seven seed in the East, maybe like and then they have no picks forever. That's so that's tough. Which side do you think is more likely to say no to that, though? Because that's a lot to give up for Van Vliet, but you can't sign him in free agency. I think the Raptors are more likely to to say yes, just because they might. They, I mean, they're probably looking at him as well. We can do this and get a bunch of picks that might be pretty darn good, um, or at least one. Uh, and we don't know if we're going to keep Van Vliet at all. So, like, well, I mean, <laughs> I think Toronto would be okay. Don't you? Like, I, if I'm, I guess unless you're, unless you're sure Van Vliet is going to be worth close to 30 million a year for at least three more years, then I'm, I'm looking to move him for something like this. Yeah. I, I just, this is the type of move I could see Washington making because like your, your pot committed, like what is the, the path with just this core is how do you improve upon it? It would be making a move like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you, sometimes the only way up is down. They just gotta, like they just got to dig deeper into this plan. Um, What's more likely? They make a trade like this, or they trade Kyle Kuzma at the deadline? Something like this, just based yeah, think- on their track record. I, they, I just, they don't operate that way. They, they, they're trying to get better, and I think you would say that this trade makes them better. I mean, in the in the immediate, right? Like they're they're total based on what they've paid guys and how when they've paid guys. Um, this is just what they do. So I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to imagine the alternative, right? <laughs> 